Let's get to the phones and hear from Steve in Chicago on our Democrats line. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Go right ahead. Good. Thank you. I just wanted to let you guys know that um, I'm from Chicago and I'm really pulling for Ron Paul. I'm a liberal. Families, all liberal Democrats. And I just found out this morning that uh, New Hampshire's motto is live free or die. And that sounds great. Yep. I just hope everybody there votes for Ron Paul. And uh, have a good day. Live. All right. Let's uh, uh, go to our next call. We have lined up to speak with us from Los Angeles, Tim, Independent Line. Good morning. Hi, right, thank you for taking my call. I'm a Ron Paul supporter. I'd like to say that people have to know about John Huntsman, that he's willing to start World War III by attacking Iran. And that is very scary, as our ships are he actually heading to the Gulf. The British warship, the Daring, is heading there. The pro-Israel lobby in America and in England is pushing this war upon us with the neoconservatives and AIPAC in America. Again, Ron Paul is the only one who's standing against this War for Israel agenda, and Americans should take a good look at him unless they want to send their sons and daughters to war for Israel with Iran. Again, John Huntsman and all the other neocon uh, GOP candidates are for war for Israel because they're pandering to the neocons. And lastly, you've got Newt Gingrich, who has this uh, rabid neoconservative, a, a Jewish donor from uh, Las Vegas, and he wants war with Iran as well. And he's probably the one who's responsible for Newt Gingrich saying that the Palestinians don't exist. And uh, again, Newt Gingrich is just a pandering, uh, warmongering uh, chicken hawk, as Ron Paul said. Go to ushijack.com for more. Thank you for your time. Arlington, Virginia, Clinton, Republican. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I really have to say I love C-SPAN. It's probably the uh, only fair and balanced uh, news out there. Um, you know, one of the things when you're looking at elections, it's really bring, being able to bring in more than just the, the party and, and being able to capture that independent vote. And, and you know, when you look at uh, Obama and the promises he made and uh, how things have come out, I think the only candidate that can, can beat him is Ron Paul, because Ron Paul is the only one out of both the Republicans as well as Obama that stands for habeas corpus, which is one of the things that Obama campaigned on, saying that he would be store habeas corpus and what he has actually done is weakened it even further uh, through the recently signing the National Defense Authorization Act. Um, so I'd like your views on that and then one other thing that I'm curious as to how come there's been no media coverage at all of the fact that the uh, ad that they attributed to a Ron Paul supporter, you know, that basically was somewhat pejorative towards uh, John Huntsman and his, his uh, adopted daughter, was actually created by John Huntsman's campaign in an attempt to create bad media coverage for Ron Paul. And this has been shown that the, the video was produced by someone who never uploaded any other videos, and then it was existed first and, and only on John Huntsman's uh, website, which just shows that it was actually uh, an act of treachery. So I'm curious, uh, why doesn't the media talk about habeas corpus and that Ron Paul is the only one that will defend Americans from and, and protect their rights to a fair trial? And how come we don't talk about the fact that John Huntsman is uh, actively uh, pursuing acts of treachery in terms of manipulating the, the, the views of the American public. Let's go on to Tom, Phoenix, Arizona. Republican, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. I, 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 um, you just said something that I want to talk about, but I'll get to my other point. You just said that the Hampshire um, Republican right is for Romney, Santorum, and Gingrich. You've got to be kidding me. Those guys are on the right way. But I want, what, I, what I don't understand is this this uh, political campaign seems to be about the economy, and and yet I don't know. Can you name one cut, that, significant cut that Romney's going to do? One significant cut that Torum's going to do? One significant cut that Gingrich is going to do? One significant cut that uh, Huntsman's going to do? None of these guys are offering cuts. They're except for Ron Paul, a trillion dollars. Yet all these guys, all these guys want to expand TSA. Not one is coming out against the TSA. Um, they want to expand the wars. They want to expand the police state. Every single one of the Republicans, except for Ron Paul, is for the bailout. Bachman wasn't, but now she's out of it. Um, they're all for bigger. None of them are coming out really that much against the Federal Reserve. Now, Newt is touching the corners, but nothing about the Federal Reserve. 
Um, I just saw um, Mitt Romney say that he wants to give more money to the International Monetary Fund. That's our money. What right does he have to give our money to this international thing? They're all for higher inflation. They're they're taking our civil liberties. With the, they, they're all every. In fact, I just saw John Huntsman come out and say that he's for the National Defense Authorization Act, which is totally taking our civil liberties away, eroding our rights. Tom, and, let's hear from Kathleen in Dayton, Ohio, Independent Line. Good morning. Yeah, hi. Hey, here's my objection. It, whether you're a Dem, an Independent, or Republican, you know, should the should the pundit class like MSNBC, which generally most of those folks are part of the one percent, should they like this morning? I I I turned over there. I flipped back and forth between C-SPAN and MSNBC in the morning, and you know they had Buddy Romer on, they had Gingrich on, they had Santorum on, they had Huntsman on, but of course. Who didn't they, they didn't have Ron Paul on? And last night I watched MSNBC from four until ten last night. Barely a mention of Ron Paul. So again, I mean, I don't support Ron Paul's um, stances on domestic issues, but clearly uh, he 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 runs through all you know independents, Republicans, and Dems on foreign policy issues. So the pundit class, like Chris Matthews, last night he called Ron Paul. The only thing he said about Ron Paul towards the end, because somebody brought him up, was that he was unelectable. Should Chris Matthews be determining, or the rest of the pundit class be determining? Who, people in New Hampshire or anywhere across the nation, should, they should just give us the bloody information. They shouldn't try to determine who we're going to vote for. Let's hear from Donald, Democratic caller in Golden Valley, Arizona. Welcome, Donald. Hi. Uh, I just have a couple of uh, comments. Uh, uh, as far as these wars and stuff, uh, I think the only way we're going to keep out of these is uh, uh, bring back the draft. And I'm a pretty strong Democrat, but uh, uh, I would vote for uh, Ron Paul. And uh, given his age, uh, I think this is his last uh, try. So uh, uh, I think he ought to run as an independent. Well, the third party option is something that he gets asked about a lot, and he really hasn't closed the door onto that. Uh, some people say that he's laying the groundwork actually for his son, Rayan Paul, who's been on the trail with him in uh, Iowa, then now he's here in New Hampshire and meeting a lot of people. Um, you know, this probably is going to be his last run. He's obviously announced that he's not going to run for re-election to the House. And so I think he's, what he's trying to do is reshape the Republican Party. I don't see any scenario in which, going to my earlier point, that no one drops out of this race because they lose contests. They drop out because they're broke. Ron Paul has an ability to raise money week after week after week from small donors, and he will be in this race probably until the convention in Tampa. Let's get one last call in. Jim in Poughkeepsie, New York, Independent Line. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, excuse my voice. I'm just getting over a call. Uh, thank you, C-SPAN, for, for being an organization you are. You're one of the only organizations we get a fair shake from. Uh, I'm a big Ron Paul supporter, and I'd like to discuss what everybody calls Ron Paul's Achilles heel, Iran. We already overthrew Iran once back in the 1950s. We overthrew a democratically elected president in Iran, Mossadegh, and we put in a, a dictator. The United States loves dictators, as we can see now. We put dictators all over the world. They're easy to control. When are we going to stop the, the, the cycle of madness that we're trapped in? How, how propagandized are the American people to believe that peace is dangerous and war is the order of the day? Jim, Jim, you said, Jim, you said this was, you think that it's Ron Paul's Achilles heel. Do you, do you think it's enough to sway voters? Well, it's, it, I don't consider it his, his heel, his Achilles heel. But with the, the uh, attention he gets from the mainstream media and, and the other, the other uh, candidates, uh, are definitely going to play to the military industrial complex and we're, we're going to be stuck in this cycle of madness uh, Ron Paul has the most sane foreign policy yet the, 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 a sane foreign policy is like an insane uh, idea these days how did we get to this Kansas City Kansas Mike Democrat good morning uh, good Kansas good morning to you uh, I'd like to say, um, with all the money that's being spent towards destroying Congressman Ron Paul, you might agree with him, you like him, you hate him, it is what it is, 
but between Mitt Romney, the guy's the biggest flip-flopper I've ever seen, and for the Republican Party, a party who used to stand on not supporting flip-floppers, it just blows my mind the support that he's getting. But I'm glad to see that a lot of Americans are waking up, and regardless of how you feel about Ron Paul, his message stands true. He doesn't waver. He doesn't flip-flop to special interests. Now, Mike, American Mike, people you, are saying that. Mike, you called in as a Democrat, so are you willing to cross party lines and, and vote for him? Absolutely, and you're seeing it from the calls that are coming in. Uh, more and more people are waking up to Ron Paul. Now, I understand how people feel about Ron Paul. He's not the perfect candidate. You're never going to find that perfect candidate, but his message, he doesn't waver. He doesn't flip-flop. He stands by the Constitution, which is a very key issue to me as an African-American Democrat, and he has my vote. Thank you. Josh, Republican in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Welcome. Hello, yes. Can you hear me? We sure can. Yeah, I just I wanted to make uh, one more endorsement of Congressman Ron Paul. Just based on his voting record, I feel like he's the most solid, most foundational candidate that we have. And so, Josh, like, let's throw David Paleologos' question to you. If uh, Ron Paul doesn't make it through the Republican primary but runs as a third-party candidate, would you vote for him? Yes, I think I would, and I think I would uh, draw my Republican status as well just to vote for him and i think uh, most supporters of his would as well because you look at it for over 30 years he's the only one that's been speaking out about the military industrial complex and the cia drug dealing and and these federal reserve issues that we need to deal with and josh do you have any concerns or would you have concerns about being a spoiler perhaps getting the candidate you you like the least elected because you shifted your vote to a third party candidate well, I just feel like more and more the people are waking up, like the other callers are saying, and, and looking for people that have that are running on principle, running on values, on moral, rather than just running as this party or that party. Daniel in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Republican, you're next. Go right ahead. Well, I just wanted to say that uh, I endorse Ron Paul because he best represents the values that I hold uh, most important as a Christian. But I just wanted to tell other Ron Paul supporters out there that they should vote for him no matter what, uh, even if even if the polls suggest that he might not win in the general election. They still need to vote for him because when if he gets enough delegates, when he gets to the convention, we can change the Republican platform to be closer to the values that the Constitution set forth, which is what Ron Paul stands for and no other candidate does. Let's go to Shuring, Wisconsin, where Eric joins us on the independent line. Good morning, Eric. Good morning. Go right ahead. Yes, I would like to first... Uh suggest to all the voting people out there to first research Hegelian dialectics and then see the film uh, Inside Job and then see which candidates reflect those principles. Only Ron Paul has any, come close to mentioning any of those things. Uh, and I don't understand why mass media says he's unelectable when it should it appears that he is surging in the polls. Eric, or, Eric is a Ron Paul supporter. Are you actively involved in his campaign? Are you contributing money, spreading the message? What are you doing? Uh, actually, uh, I've been a Ron Paul supporter for years. Uh, I was I voted for him his last time out as an independent, and uh, I think he's the only one that uh, really talks what this country needs to turn around. Let's hear from Jim, who's a Republican caller on Long Island, New York. Good morning. Good morning, Libby. Uh, thank God for C-SPAN and uh, all you good people that uh, take the abuse from the populace every day. Um, my main concern is I'm losing faith rapidly in the Republican Party. And uh, when you look at how they, uh, the media sabotages Ron Paul, it's like uh, he doesn't exist unless they really have to talk about him. They've been pushing Romney for the last couple of years. Um, he's big money, big money behind him. Wall Street, just like Wall Street backed Obama. Uh, I think Wall Street is, uh, uh, Paul scares the living hell out of them because they won't be able to steal from the American public anymore. Uh, at least with Ron Paul at the helm, we'll, we'll get back to uh, the Constitution and, and our liberties will be protected. Uh, when I look at four years ago in New Hampshire with Ron Paul leading going into the primaries and McCain trailing, and then the votes seem to have been flipped 
by the Attorney General. I wonder if he's the same man today. Could you comment on that, please? Let's go to Baltimore, Maryland. Kaylee on our Republican line. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to call in and say uh, I've been listening for the past about half an hour, and I've been sitting here listening to a lot of different people call in and complain that pretty much basically criticizing all Republicans as being racist and against poor people. And I am a poor white female from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm a Republican. And I don't want to hear that they're against poor people or black people or any of that, because my ex-boyfriend was black, and I'm getting so sick of hearing this crap because we have to work hard ourselves to earn. We, we shouldn't just be handed everything. Yeah, and I can I ask you, can I ask you, since you're talking about this issue of, uh, of who's looking out for uh, the poor, who's looking out for the working class in America and the race, what do you think about what's going on right now with the other Republican candidates pointing their finger at Mitt Romney? They're saying that his version of capitalism has hurt Americans. Do you buy what they're saying? Uh, no, I'm, I, I vote for Ron Paul. That's who I would vote for if I got to say. I mean, I don't know if he's going to win. I highly doubt it from what I'm listening to. And why would, why would you vote for him? Because just a lot of his, I've been listening to a lot of his uh, rallies and speeches and stuff, and everything that he pretty much is saying is hitting it right on the nail. It hits right at home. But I'm, you know, I'm thinking the exact same thing, and I'm like, you know, people always say, they're like, oh, it's, it's common that people pick a older white man for a president. And it's not about white. It's not that he's old. It's that he's wise. And sometimes, you know, you find somebody that's been around for a while and they've been in the government system. You know, they've done, they know a lot more than some of these younger people. They just do. You can just tell their tone and in their sincerity. Well, let's take a look at a story about Ron Paul in the Washington Post. It says... In this Republican primary season of fickle voters, Paul supporters are unique in their steadfast devotion to a man they often see less as a candidate than a cause. Although doing well in Tuesday's primary is important to his followers, they also tend to see themselves as players in the grander struggle Paul describes, one in which decades of government expansion, disastrous economic policy, unjustified foreign meddling, and lapsing civil liberties threaten to undermine the republic unless, that is, people wake up from their nanny state subservience and save the nation from tyranny. It is a dark, if oddly energizing, vision that has especially resonated with the young male demographic. Let's hear from Juanita, independent caller in Springfield, Nebraska. Hi, Hi there. good morning. Good morning. Um, just kind of wanted, just been listening. This is like the first time I've ever even seen your show, but I kind of like it. Um, just kind of wanted some points. I'm... Um, basically a Ron Paul advocate, I'm Pauline, or whatever you want to call me. Um, just to the Illinois man that just called in, um, maybe he should look into Ron Paul's disappearing middle class. He has some really good remarks on that. Um, and also, people need to realize um, racism, you know, your religion, your sexual affiliations, your pro-life, pro-choice, these are all things that divide us. And the more divided we are, the easier we are to conquer as a people. And when this happens, our attention is getting diverted away from what the government is doing, what these politicians have done to our country. And we're basically bankrupt. Well, we are bankrupt. But we can't just continue to spend and spend and spend. And people think that, you know, we can outlast this empire. Well, all empires fall. And, you know, we're in that decline right now. People need to realize this. We're hated around the world. You know, and that's because we think we can just do these things to people and have no responsibility and we're not accountable because we're the only superpower in the world. This is absolutely ridiculous mentality that, you know, cannot go on. At some point in time, we are going to have to be accountable for what we have done around the world. Rob in Washington, D.C., Republican caller. Good morning, Rob. Hi, Rob. You're on the air. Please turn on your TV. Hi, uh, I'm uh, right here. Okay, so please go ahead and turn on your TV. Um, I'm watching right now. I, I have serious concerns about what we're dealing with uh, in our country right now. Um, with our current uh, president, and I feel that, I feel that, you know, right now we are being, we are being taken over within. And honestly, I feel like somebody like Ron Paul is not, is not even a chance that we cannot elect him. He is somebody to save us and bring us into, bring
bring us into what we believe America once was. And what we are seeing America turn into day by day on hundreds of thousands of video cameras all over across America is what we saw in Germany in World War II is the exact same. It is just repeating itself in history. And if you cannot see this, then this is, this is an absolute issue that American people need to address. Let's go on to our next call. Andrew, Republican in Gainesville, Florida. Andrew, what do you think about the New Hampshire primary? Uh, uh, good morning. I just want to say that um, <clears throat> uh, I think that Ron Paul is, is, is the clear and definite choice to restore America. Uh, I'm 24 years old. I'm a young black Republican. It's not that many of us. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, you know, fight, fight the good fight. I want to say, people, stop being ignorant. Do do your research. Learn about your candidates. Don't call a, a man racist just because you know your neighbor says something or. Or, you know, your, your, your friend says something, do your own research and learn for yourself. And, and, and another thing I want to say is black people have this undying uh, 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 alliance to Obama when he has done nothing for us. And the thing is, is that Ron Paul will do way more for black people than Obama. Thank you. Good morning. Next up is a call from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Tyrone is a Republican there. Tyrone, you're on. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Susan. How are you tonight? Great. Thanks. Good. I'm so grateful for your station to give us a chance to comment on the uh, primaries. Uh, I, I, I'm a supporter of, of Ron Paul, and uh, I, I tell you, he, he's, it's like day and night between him and, and the rest of the candidates, it's, especially Mitt Romney. He, I heard the speech that you played, and I mean, actually, he frightens me. You know, with with all of the militarism he's talking about and making us. Uh, be the police of another world because we just don't have the capacity to do that. It costs lives more than anything else. And I'm so happy that people are rallying around Ron Paul. It took a while. You know, he ran in 2008 and he, 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 he did well and he stayed in the race until June. It will be interesting to see when the Republican convention comes if Mr. Paul stays in the race uh, and he keeps gaining the momentum he's gaining, even though he don't win. It would be interesting to see can he have some type of reconciliation with the party because it's like night and day and all in water. And I, I don't know if he would go in as a third candidate. If he did and ran as a third-party candidate, I would surely support him because it's, it's just like everybody else is on one page and he's on the other. As a citizen of this country, I just don't think we can sustain what we've been doing for so long, and it's finally bankrupting us, and it's costing the young people their lives in these foreign countries. Thank you for letting me get my... Next is a call from Wolfsboro, New Hampshire. Jim, independent. You're on the air, Jim. Go ahead. Oh, good evening, Susan. I, for 16 years or more, I've been... I've never re managed to uh, speak to you. However, um, I'm pleased for that. But I, I w I'm an independent voter who... Um, I voted for John Huntsman today. I was torn between Ron Paul and John Huntsman. Um, but I just listened to um, the congressman's speech, and I'm I'm kind of blown away by what he said. So, um, in a sense, I regret that I voted for John Huntsman, except that um, both of them seem to be good men. Now, Jim, have uh, Ron Paul's been all over the state. He's certainly got a quite a bit of television coverage. Have you not heard his speeches before? Well, I, I did. Uh, I didn't. No, I didn't really uh, listen much to his speeches. Um, I um, I just was so persuaded tonight in the issues that he raised, and of course, you know, withdrawal from um, from the military um, engagements that we have. <clears throat> I talked with both supporters, uh, with the supporters of both Huntsman and um, and uh, Ron Paul today, and I was impressed because in Wolfboro, which is a small community of six thousand, where Governor Romney does have a summer home. Um, there were, oh, I'd say, 20 supporters, young supporters, all young supporters of uh, Ron Paul, and two supporters of John Huntsman. Now, they, they pers I mean, the Huntsman guy com persuaded me in that I, I was concerned that Ron Paul would be a, a loose cannon, and yet his, his, um, his views make so much sense to me that... Um, uh, I, I just hope he can go the route. On the other hand, 
I, I voted for uh, Obama in 2008. I may vote for him again. I'm not sure. But it strikes me that um, Ron Paul is the only one who might shake up the establishment in, in Washington and, and get new thinking into many, many areas. We had a, um, a fear tactic in that, oh, I, uh, well, of course, uh, um, Ron Paul, I believe, wants to withdraw from the U.N., um, and that might be a mistake. However, it seems as if nothing could dislodge the, um, the powers that be um, without someone who is severely different, <laughs> you know, from the status quo. Well, Jim, thanks so much for okay. calling in with your vote and your rationale for it, uh, sharing that with our national audience. Next up is a viewer in Nashville, Tennessee. Stephen's a Republican as well. Stephen, watching this Republican primary from a distance, and how's it all look to you? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I appreciate you taking my call. Um, I do agree or agree with the gentleman from New Hampshire, your first caller. He had said that communication and understanding uh, you know, of our allies and enemies is a key point in relationships. And if you understand the people in, uh, you know, in the foreign lands that we do occupy and obviously have to, to deal with in uh, the economic roles of the world, uh, I'm sure they don't appreciate us you know, playing the role of the peacock and showing our feathers to everybody. But uh, that brings me to my point that I'm, I'm concerned with the winner of the primary of the Iowa primary and the projected winner of uh, here in New Hampshire, Mitt Romney. He seems to have gotten by so far by simply bashing Obama and his policies without laying out his own plans or true strategy to reverse the Obama effect in Washington that has proven to be such a key point in this GOP election. Uh, I hope to see more substance in the debates, events, and town halls and, and less criticism of each other from the candidates. Uh, that could you know, which could be used negatively by the Democrats and Obama in later stages of the election. Um, these Stephen, displays, I kind of feel, what help make the choice for a lot of people for the Republican constitutionalist that seems to only know substance, and that's Ron Paul. What are your top couple of issues? Um, <clears throat> my issues are just, I mean, foreign policy, of course, is uh, foreign policy, the Getting Obama out of office seems to be the key point for most Republicans this year. Um, not exactly the priority on my list. Mine would be the economy and foreign policy, which, you know, um, I would have to side with Ron Paul, which is a little odd for me saying that. Uh, recent, you know, I haven't followed his campaign until the past you know, couple of years or what he actually stands and speaks for and what he's been consistent with for his all 30 years he served uh, in Congress. Okay, thank you so much for your call. Next is a viewer in Trumbull, Connecticut. This is Donna. Donna, it's the first we've heard from a Democrat, and uh, looks like Mr. Huntsman might be coming in, so quick comment from you, please. Yes, hi, Susan. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I just wanted to say I am a Democrat from Connecticut, but I think I am definitely joining the Ron Paul revolution, and I wanted to say that I feel it's pretty disgusting the way the media has tried to make him out to be some kind of quack all this time when he's probably the smartest man up there. Um, definitely a lot of people are resonating with him, even myself as a Democrat. Um, I feel they asked him very few questions at the debate, and um, they didn't even put his, have his name up there at the bottom of the screen at uh, 8 o'clock or 8.15 tonight. It's as though he doesn't even exist, but yet he's coming in second, and, and people are relating to what he has to say. And um, I, I'm just upset to, to see how they've Donna, totally we're going to jump in. Thanks so much. Flint, Michigan. Dan, a Republican. Go ahead, please. Yes, Susan, thank you for letting me have the chance to talk tonight. Uh, first of all, I'm a United States citizen. Second of all, I'm a conservative. Third of all, I'm a Republican. But I'm very, very disappointed and disgusted at the way that our representatives have been represented in us as a country and taken us down the road that I don't believe our forefathers had intended us to. The economy, in my opinion, is the most important thing that needs to be addressed. And we cannot be ambassadors to the rest of the world and take care of ourselves here in the economy. If we don't take care of the economy here, China is right at our doorstep, and they will take us over as a world power 
and we will have to succumb to them for whatever uh, they decide they want us to do. We already have to build auto factories over there to sell our cars over there. But um, uh, out of all these candidates, I hear the same rhetoric except for Ron Paul. He seems to make the most common sense. Common sense doesn't seem to be so common anymore amongst most people, but the other candidates seem to just talk the same rhetoric until they get elected. Once they get elected, it's it's the uh, lobbyists that control this country, it seems to be. So... um, I am glad the Tea Party started to make people aware of the situations uh, and the way our government's running. And uh, for me, um, uh, I'm going to have to vote for Ron Paul this time around. Because, okay, Dan, uh, thank you so much. Calling from Flint, Michigan. Here's one comment from a Facebook poster who writes, Ron Paul appears to be more than doubling his 2008 totals in New Hampshire. That's very impressive, especially considering that Romney is not showing much growth from 2008. If they were stocks, you'd sell Romney and buy Paul, but they are not. The media has already made up their minds for you. Back to telephone calls. Next up is Salt Lake City. This is Tony in Independent there. Hi, Tony. You're on. Hi. How are you this evening? Great. Thanks thank for you. taking my call. Sure thing. Uh, I've been watching this going on. I don't have TV at my house myself, so I all I can do is look at... Uh, Yahoo, uh, CNN News on the Internet, and that I do at other people's houses because I can't afford it. I'm less than $2,500 or $25,000 a year income. Um, I'm a Mormon. I live in Utah. I would vote for Huntsman before I voted for Romney, but Ron Paul's the man. Um, I don't see why the media is downplaying Ron Paul so much. Uh, at the same time, I'm uh, I'm disappointed in Obama. The, all the promises. Um, there's so much out there that can be done for the people, and he's very capable of doing it. Ron Paul says, "Let's bring our military home. Let's build bases here. Let's rebuild the bases we closed." Why uh, don't all these other uh, runners suggest similar things? Everything's so short cut and timid. It just is disappointing to me. Well, Tony, since you're a uh, Utah citizen and John Huntsman was your governor, can you tell our audience a little bit of your opinions of how he governed? Um, I actually met John Huntsman once at the uh, Maverick Center during a concert. Um, I wasn't impressed. Uh, he seemed all show. It seems like all of them are all show, but Ron Paul, it just seems like Paul is, everything he says is for us. Uh, Huntsman's a decent guy. Uh, he had a great family. And you know what? The fact that his father is a millionaire and is not supporting him in the sense of handing him money for his running cash shows that Huntsman is standing on his own two feet, and I respect that of the man. He went out there, he's doing it, saying, look, Dad, I'm trying this without your help, and that's where I am. So I like Huntsman in that sense. Okay, Tony, thank you so much for calling, particularly a guy without a television involved in our discussion tonight. I move on to Brooke, Democrat in New York City. You're on, Brooke. Yes, um, you know, I'm a Democrat. I'm a black American. Uh, I like Ron Paul. Um, and, you know, they, they say things about his past being racial comments. I've read a few of those. I don't think that they were uh, bigotry. I just think that he was, in many cases, just stating... Brooke, I apologize uh, to you, too. Next up is Marie, who is a Republican in Bakersfield, California. Hi, Marie, you're on. Hi, thanks for taking my call. I would like to say that I am a Ron Paul supporter and that I go out every day with a homemade sign on the streets because that's how much I believe in him. I would like to say that the media should be ashamed of themselves for what they're doing and also that nobody is going to play with my Constitution. Okay? I'm going to stand up for my Constitution and my rights. And, Marie, do you often find yourself this passionate about a candidate? Pardon me? Have you found yourself this passionate about candidates in the past? No, I have not. I'm tired of the way our our, um, country is... um, is disintegrating 
um, I have so much passion in my heart to go out every day and to hold my homemade sign to, 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 to help, you know, to show that Ron Paul, Ron Paul is the one that needs to be voted in and okay. to be the next president. Thanks for calling to make your comment. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, up next. And this is Ralph, a Democrat. You're on. Hi, thank you so much for having me on. Um, in 2008, I was uh, an Obama voter, um, and actually tonight I'm pretty ecstatic to see Ron Paul getting the votes he's getting. And uh, after seeing him speak, I think he definitely uh, deserves a win here. I felt the excitement of, of a football game while watching him in my living room and, uh, you know, put a big smile, smile on my face. He brought up a lot of good points and brings up a lot of things of our, our constitutional nature that need to be fixed and restored. Um, you know, recently the NDAA took effect, which is completely unconstitutional for our rights, and, you know, Obama's done a lot to deceive the American people, so hopefully, uh, you know, we can see Ron Paul get in there and really make a change for the nation and, uh, you know, do what's best for the people. Next up is Hopkinton, New Hampshire. Richard, an independent. Did you vote today, Richard? Yes, I did. Uh, my wife and I both voted, and uh, our complaint uh, that we want to make uh, on your show tonight is the mistreating of Ron Paul by the media and how uh, poorly people understand what he stands for. We've been to his uh, rallies. We've been to see him, see him and talk to him, and I've heard several people tonight call into you and say, oh, I just found out he is standing for a certain thing. We need more fairness. I think he would have won tonight if the media had been fair. Thank you. Thanks for your call. Uh, first, though, let's go back to a local polling place in Manchester, New Hampshire, and check in there. The Secretary of State is expecting here in New Hampshire about a 42% voter turnout. We're at Ward 4 in McDonough School where the voters have been coming in since 6 a.m. this morning. One of them is Roger Davies who's just voted this morning. Who'd you vote for? Uh, some fellow from Texas. Congressman Ron Paul, why did you choose him? Uh, he's a straight shooter. Uh, didn't have anything bad to say about anybody else. He stood on his own hind legs and delivered his message with clarity. A lot of respect for a man. Yep. When did you decide to vote for Ron Paul? Uh, a few months ago, to tell you the truth. Uh, his uh, his flyers were good, uh, straight to the straight to the teeth, and and uh, I, I liked his approach. All right, I'm going to do this. Uh, not uh, not some hollow promiscuous nonsense about I might okay or we're going to look into. But he had uh, a definite purpose, states of purpose. What have you been paying attention to during leading up to today's primary debates, town halls? What what do you listen to 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 make your decision? I read the newspaper. All right, I read uh, political magazines. I read everybody's flyers, uh, and I listen to them on TV. What about the debates? Any impact? Uh, not at all. Why not? Uh, it got to be. Uh, I, I don't like uh, people telling other people, cu cu cutting them down. I, d I just don't go for that. That's not a way to make your position. What about the so-called front runner here in New Hampshire? We'll see what happens today, but uh, the former Massachusetts governor, Mitt Romney. Well, I think, uh, I think Mitt's working hard, all right? I think he should, too. Um, I, I don't know about Mitt, all right? I think there's some strikes against him. Via, uh, his, his uh, governorship in Massachusetts didn't seem to affect us to, in, in New Hampshire at all. Uh, and what about John Huntsman? He's spent a lot of time in this state. I went to listen to John in Concord about uh, two months ago. He impressed me as a very straightforward, honest, dedicated politician. But you still decided not to vote for him? I didn't think he had uh, the, the swell of the public to support him. But you think Ron Paul does? I think that Ron Paul has a lot more metal than Mr. Hunt. What about the former speaker, Newt Gingrich? I don't like the man. Why not? Uh, it's two-faced. What about his um, leadership skills? He was the speaker of the house. And when he was there, he did a lot to impede the progress of the president. So I can't admire that at all. 
Roger Davies, thank you very much for your time this morning. My pleasure.